Hi, I'm Justin, and welcome to the Landis Look, where we take an inside look at the world of real estate. Today, we're going to take a look at real estates and recessions. I keep hearing people talking about recessions. People ask me about it. I see it on social media. There was a curved article about it. And first of all, are we in a recession? Does anyone know the answer to this question? Do you know what a recession is? Well, we are not in one, first of all. So if you said, yes, we're in a recession, you're wrong. We are not in a recession. And I'm not, I mean, I don't have a degree in economics. I'm definitely not an expert uh, at that. But I do know that a recession is defined by two consecutive negative quarters of GDP growth. The GDP growth in the United States in the first quarter and second quarter of this year were 3.1% and 2%. So the economy, gross domestic product, has actually grown. Now granted, could it be growing at a slower pace and so it feels like we're in a slowdown? Yes, but at a high level, we are not in a recession. GDP has not declined. It is still, it has still grown and so we are not in it. However, if we were in a recession, or something that felt like a recession, so maybe we have a declining growth, what would that do to real estate? I think that we're all super interested in that because I know I've gotten a lot of questions about it. So I did a little bit of research and went back and looked. So in the last seven recessions, how many times do you think that home prices have dropped? Home prices always drop during a recession? Home prices drop usually, sometimes, never? Well, I think you probably know it's not never because in the Great Recession, everybody knows that home prices did drop. But in the last seven recessions, home prices have actually only dropped two times. So five other times, economy is in a recession, GDP is negative, but home prices have gone up. Well, it's because they're not exactly tied, right? So they're not exactly tied and you can have different forces that cause recessions. The last recession was I don't know whether you would say completely caused, but definitely fueled by the housing market. And so here's some interesting stuff about what happened last time that I think personally is probably unlikely to happen if we do go into recession in the next couple of years. So first of all, I found this super interesting. Most of the press you get around what happened in the housing market and why it caused the recession and what was the worst part is the one word that I hear over and over, subprime. Right? You're probably thinking in your head, it was the subprime mortgage crisis. And there was definitely an issue with the subprime mortgages, but you know where there was actually a bigger issue? It was with people who had high credit scores, bought investment properties that were not good investments, that were based on speculation, because actually this is a cool stat. In the top quartile of people credit score, so this is the highest credit score, so say roughly 720 to 800. Of the total mortgages that people had in 2007 and those credit scores, 43% were on investment properties. 43% of the people with the best credit had investment properties. And you better believe that in 2008 and nine, the delinquency and foreclosure rates absolutely skyrocketed on those properties. And why is that? It's because it was speculation. They didn't have an actual need for those houses. And so if the economy turns around or the prices go down or you lose your job, are you going to let it stop paying on your personal residence or an investment house that's empty? Most people, the investment house that's empty. I see way less, and this is not based on stats. This is just me seeing the market from last time to this time. I see way less speculation this time around than last time. And so I think that's pretty unlikely um, that there's going to be such a big amount of speculation that would lead to a big real estate decline there. Secondly, we have really low supply right now. And so the market has definitely stabilized this year, slowed down, whatever word you would use, but the supply is still low in most price points. And so it's not like there's a ton of inventory on the market that even if we do go into an economic recession, that there's all these houses that are for sale and no one is there to buy them. And that's also different than, than last time. So as we look at this and you think about, hey, if maybe should I wait until prices go down, would that be a good idea? Or should I buy now because five of the last seven recessions has gone up? Let me share you a couple stats and then I'll ask you a few questions at the end that I think are really great clarifying questions to help you with that decision. First of all, you never know when the top or bottom of a market is until you're actually on the other side of it, right? You don't know that you truly have the top until you're coming down and you don't know you truly have the bottom until you're coming up. So the market has still risen. Median sales price has increased year over year from this year to last year, even though it has slowed down. So we have not already seen, hey, we're coming from a pricing standpoint, we're coming down the other side of the hill. 
Did you know that if you were to look, say, 2005, for example, and you're like, hey, market seems like it's getting high, I can see a recession coming, or I can see a slowdown coming, I think prices are going to come down, and you would have been right about that. But do you know when, after the peak of 2007, it was until prices were back down to 2005? It was 2009. So if you said, hey, in 2005, I'm going to wait because I want the prices to go down and get a better deal, it would have been 2009 until you got the same deal, 2010 until you got a better deal. And so from a pure investment standpoint, if you're thinking, hey, I just want to buy an investment property, I just want to buy an investment, yeah, that would have been a great decision. If you're thinking about this from I'm actually living there, I'm paying money to a landlord or I'm paying down my mortgage, that's five years. That's a long time if your situation was that, hey, I could have afforded a house in 2005. It would have been great to live there. Living there would have been better. Paying down my mortgage would have been better than paying the landlord. Obviously, lots of factors go into that, but that's a long time to wait. And what if that's the same situation here? Man, that could be a long time to wait till prices are actually lower. Another thing along that is for real estate, your gain or loss is only realized when you actually sell. So even people who bought in 2007 in most parts of Atlanta, it's actually turned out fine if you didn't have to sell the house. If you had to sell the house, 2011, 12, 13, 14, something like that, yes, that was a loss, that was bad. But if you didn't have to sell the house, you're doing fine. If you had the ability to hold it and either live in it or hold it and rent it out and wait, in most places the market's back and in a lot of places, if you bought a house in 2007, man, you're thinking you're lucky stars that you bought anything in any of those previous years because prices have gone up so much. So let me leave you with this. If you're kind of on the fence about how, you know, should I buy a house now or should I wait in one of your big factors is what's happening in the economy. Is there going to be a recession? What's happening with prices? Let me ask you these two questions and I'll tell you where I heard them. Heard them from Gary Keller. Gary Keller is the founder and CEO of Keller Williams, number one real estate company in the world. And here are his two questions to ask yourself if you're worried about the market or trying to time the market. First of all, do you have a reason to buy a house? So for the, all the people in 2007 that had great credit and bought houses speculatively, they did not have an actual reason to buy a house. Speculation is not a reason. So what would be a reason to buy a house? It would be, hey, I'm getting married. We want to have a place of our own. Our family's growing. We need more space. I know I'm, I'm going to be in Atlanta for a while. I want to put down roots and start building equity. It could even be, I have money that I want to invest in real estate and I can get an actual cash flow on it, a positive return. I'm doing this for investment reasons and it's an actual investment, not speculation. Those are two different things. So first question, do you have a reason to buy a house? Should you buy a house? Do you have a reason that you would actually want to do it or need to do it? And secondly, can you afford it? Once again, back to the speculation of 2007, people could not afford to hold those houses. They were just hoping that the market was going to keep going up and that's why they got foreclosed. And so can you afford it? You know, that's a deeper question because that doesn't mean, hey, can I afford it if I have a 100% commission job and I have the best year of my life every single year? Then the answer is no, you probably can't afford it. But if it, hey, can I afford this house if there is a little bit of bump in the road or maybe I don't get a big bonus next year or something like that because we go into a recession or the economy is not quite as good. Can you afford to hold the house either yourself or could you rent it out and afford it or could you take on a roommate and afford it because here's the thing those two questions answer is this the right time because if you need a house for a certain reason in your life then obviously there's a value to that and secondly if you can afford it you don't have to sell it in a down market so you're not going to be forced to realize the loss even if the market goes down You'll sell it when the market is up, when the timing is good, because you have the ability to hold the house. So let me leave you with those two questions again. Do I have a reason to buy a house and can I afford it? If the answer to those two questions are yes, Gary's point is why try to time the market? Because you have a reason to buy it, you can afford it. None of us have a crystal ball and are able to time the market. So there's a little, my little take, get off the soapbox on that. I hope you found this interesting. If you have any specific questions and if you need help thinking through, can you afford a house? Do you have a good reason to? We would love to have that conversation with you. We'll see you next week. Thanks for listening.